Hey, Evil Dead fans. As you can see, some progress has been done. Uh, I have my thickness with my initial stuff I'm using called Sculpit. And I am just kind of placing the bones at the distance and kind of seeing how long it is because this bone, of course, doesn't sit there. This toe or this foot, it's actually off to the side, but it's actually about right at the bottom of this bone here. So it's right about from there all the way up to about here where this piece is going to go. It's about 10 inches. Now we know the totes is about nine inches, I want to say right around nine inches uh, for their help. Of course, I will take this down. And I got to say though, after researching the Trick or Treat Studios dagger, it's pretty damn on point. I mean, it, there is some inaccuracies, but you know, you can't blame them because of what photos we have of the Evil Dead 2 dagger. So, I mean, they're pretty damn close. So I ain't gonna lie. It's a good dagger to have uh, and a good dagger to buy. And also Roger Allen Baker's file. Uh, his dagger's very, very good as well. Uh, both have inaccuracies in that, you know, like I said, with the photos that we have of it, of the original that was used, and even the stunt one that was used, it's very, very limited to having great photos of it. But in this video, I will go over the whole construction so far and uh, cover the products I'm using and the distance I'm using to put some of this stuff together and uh, not so much the thicknesses because the thickness will change when I add the second product, Milliput, to actually start putting the bones on. So as of right now, it's basically it's right about an inch and a half on each side to side. And what I'm going to do on the very next video, I will be starting to put the bones on and you will see it start to thicken up. Uh, the one way I figured out my thickness is holding it like that because I know when Tom Sullivan and Andy holds it, they're like this. So I know adding the bones will thicken it up so you don't want to add too much of this sculpted. And one thing that I got to say, you're going to watch the video and it says it doesn't crack, it cracks um, when it starts to dry because it does shrink. So the, the heavier use you have of this stuff called sculpt it, it um, will crack because it dries and will, while it dries, it air, actually air dries, while it dries, um, it'll shrink up and start to crack. And if it starts to crack, you just fill it back in. Just make sure it's cured before you start filling it back in so it doesn't crack back out. And if you got small cracks, the next process with the middle put is gonna cover all that up. So let's go see the video um, for this next part of building the Evil Dead 2 Kendarian Dagger. What is up Evil Dead fans? This is part three on making the Evil Dead 2 dagger. I think the last video accidentally said uh, Necronomicon. Sorry about that, it's the Kandarian dagger. Some people say Kandarian dagger. You pick and choose. Okay, so this one we're actually gonna start sculpting, kind of making the body of the dagger. Now what I'm gonna be using in this video is some sculpt it. You can get that at Hobby Lobby for about 20 bucks. After that, we'll be using some Milliput. If you don't know what Milliput is, if you haven't been watching the channel long enough, I use the crap out of that. It's great for filling in spots in plastic, sculptures, anything. It's an amazing product. And you can pick that up at Hobby Lobby too. Has about a good work time of about, you know, if you can use water with it and thin it out and stuff. So good work time to about 30, 40 minutes. And it takes about, you know, four to eight hours to dry, four to eight hours to dry, depending on the application, how thick. This one has a long work time too, and it dries about 24 to 48, depending on the project and thickness you're gonna use. So right now we have the skull, and I'm gonna pop this piece off, because I don't need that on right now. And we're gonna make the base of it. Now this dowel rod, this is about a half inch dowel rod, and what it'll be is the actual body part of it. I want the roundness of it so I can actually start working the body with the roundness instead of something square. The square part will be attached up here going across to the skull. Now I am going to cut the skull out a bit here just so I can sink it in, glue it in, and then make sure I got that proper kind of somewhat downward angle with it. So let's get to that. 
Okay, we have it cut. We have it screwed in. I actually cracked it a bit right there, if you can see, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. Just put some glue down. We're going to sculpt over it anyway, so that's going to have a little more hold. One thing we're going to do is when we attach the head here, we're going to make sure that this is vertical, a straight vertical, because this one has to look down just a bit. Now, you don't have to have the jaw on there. Just put it on there to see how it would look. And it can't be looking too far down. Not like that. <clears throat> and in the future, I doubt I'll have to, but I will might have to trim this down. I doubt it. But if I do, it's not a big deal. It's just wood. And if you're wondering about the cross measurement, how I got it, I'll show you what I got. I actually cut it twice because it was too, way too long. That's about, right about two and a quarter. Right about there. A good way to do it, since you have the kit, is you kind of look at it like this, and you grab this that goes on top, and you kind of just fit it down where it needs to go, which is basically right about right there. So that gives me plenty of room in the back, plenty of room in the front to sculpt down here and back here and over the top. So now that I got it placed right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some gel super glue here, just Loctite gel super glue so it doesn't move. I'm not gonna put too much down just because in case I need to adjust it, it'll be easy for me to actually remove it without having to just destroy this whole piece. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the wood for the initial sculpt. What I mean initial sculpt is, I'm not putting the bones in yet or anything like that. What I'm doing is giving this a good proper thickness for what, how I need it to look. And we're gonna take our time with it because I'm only gonna do this once and that's it. So what I'm gonna do is get the sculpt it. You can sand, drill, paint, all this. When it's dry, this air dries. You can use water with it so um, it actually says it's good to use water with it because not too much water because it helps stick a little better and what I'm gonna do is just get the thickness down now when I do start doing the bones you can use this but I'm not gonna I'm gonna let the, all that dry that thickness part let it get nice and thick it will shrink a little bit so just remember that when you start using anything that dries naturally almost everything you don't need gloves with it you know that's the nice part about it but when I'm done I'm going to use Milliput with the bones because Milliput, I, I like it a lot more. It dries faster than this and it can take my time. So what I'll do is when I am placing one bone, I'll put the Milliput down, squish it in there, and then put whatever look I need to around the bones. And then I can actually pull the bone out if I want to and let it dry. Then add a little glue where that bone was at once I'm done because I actually want to take the bone out paint it once it's dry, add the glue, and stick the bone back in there. So you'll get an exact print where that bone is, and I'll get to that when we get to that. It'll probably be on the next video. But right now, I'm gonna open up the sculpt it and add that to this. One thing I'm doing, I'm actually gonna add a lot more than I probably need because I can sand it down. I wanna make sure I have enough uh, material dry that I can work with rather than adding more on because it's more of a wait time and dry time. I'd rather have more than I can actually grind off, sculpt down, um, sand off than I, than I need. So let's get to that. Okay, one thing I did is looking it over, I did bevel this down a bit, that point. So if you're using a thicker piece like this, you might want to bevel that down to give it a better slope and not have to worry about that point. If, depending on the size of the wood you use. I, I did bevel down these edges just a little bit more too. So I'll get the sculpting right now. All right, just added the last, I wouldn't say last, but added that sculpted here. And I'm gonna add some more, thicken it up a little bit more. And uh, all you gotta do is just, you can use it with water, just get a cup of water, dip your fingers in it, get it wet. You don't have to use a ton. And if you want to smooth it out once you have it on there, same thing, get your hands wet and just start smoothing it out. I'm not gonna do that in motion um, that you're all thinking. But one thing I've really got to do some research about is it would have been easier with it off is this little bone right here. If I need to cut it off or if I fill it in, I need to 
looking at that. That's one thing I've ignored. So it's kind of a pain now to get it off, but honestly, it won't be that bad because of, uh, I got Dremels for that kind of stuff. But I had to get the mouth open enough because it's not like wide open, like all the way. It's almost, but it's not all the way. You see how those bones stick out like that? Kind of looks funky. So I may have to cut it off, but I will add on some more layers. Um, this is drying. It actually dries fairly quick. I mean, you want a full cure, give it about over an overnight. I'm gonna add some more layers here. I'm gonna leave that flat there because that is flat on some photos. This will be rounded out and of course bigger and shaped better. But stay tuned for that. That's all I got for now. And when you see this next, it will be bigger. Until next time, you guys stay groovy.